Well, go ahead and take your copy of God's Word. Turn it to Genesis 1, Genesis chapter 1. We're talking about today on this Mother's Day. I want to preach a word on the gate of family. The gate of family. I thought, what a better way to honor the Lord and to honor moms than by talking about, so in this series of Living for More, we've been talking about how each of these gates are so important to our city, to our county, to our nation, and that we as believers all have some form of apest anointing. That's a code word for Ephesians 4. So that stands for apostolic, prophetic, evangelistic, shepherding, and teaching. And the devil's trying to keep all the believers in the church and just circle the wagons and oh it's bad it's bad out there in the world don't go out there in the world just everybody get together and hold hold on hold on because it's rough out there and God never tells you to hold on he tells you to let loose he says I have called you for such a time as this and that you're going to step into these gates of society and make an impact do you know that that you are you are called to business so we've been saying things like this there is no such thing as secular employment for the believer. There's no such thing as secular employment for the believer. Every believer is in ministry. I just happened to catch Joe Airy out of the corner of my eye over there. Joe, do you know that two times in the past four weeks, I have randomly ran into people in the community that I did not know at all. And they said this, do you know Joe Airy? I said, absolutely I do. They said, when Joe was my manager at work, he walked in such a way that I felt so loved. I loved coming to work. I loved what I did because of my connection to Joe Airy. And you made a huge impact on their life by stepping into this business. Can we just honor the Lord for like, understand you don't, you don't even know the impact Teachers, healthcare workers, government officials, those of you that are stepping into media, entertainment, and all of these different areas, you don't even know the impact that you are having for the kingdom of God. Because we talked about this last week, whoever controls the gates controls the city. How many of you know the devil is infiltrating some gates in our society? How many of you know this, this family gate that we're talking about today? This gate is a, is a battleground. And you say, Pastor, this is going to be a little bit of a heavy message for Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day, Pastor. Tell me some stories and get me to brunch, right? Like, but I got, I got to preach this. I got, I got to preach this today. And hear me today. Like, I'm going to be talking about some, some kind of hot topic issues First of all, I would say this, um, you say, well, this is political. It's not political, it's spiritual. It's spiritual. And so we can't afford, the church can't afford to be neutral on these issues. We can't afford to be, can, um, so in, in two weeks, I'm preaching on this one. Y'all want to be here for that. That's going to be fun. We're going to talk about all the, all the stuff. Um, but let me, let me just be very, very specific. May the 17th are local primaries in our county. Um, how many of you understand during the past two years that local elections matter? Who, who the governor of the states were mattered, right? Who the mayor of cities were mattered. Who your school board was mattered. And so do you know that 65% of professing Christians don't vote in local elections? See, it, I'm telling you, multiply church could step into this gate, right? We could, step, we could step into this gate. Now, maybe you're like me, and you drive around the roundabout, and you're like, I have no idea, <laughs> right? Like, what, I don't even know what these positions are. I don't know these names, all of these yard signs. You're like, you're like I don't even know. Let me give you a resource. Let me give you a resource. It's myfaithvotes.org, myfaithvotes.org. And I want to encourage you, Multiply Church, let's begin to step into this gate, not with political aspirations, but with Jesus aspirations, with biblical aspirations, and say, these are the candidates, I'm going to do my research, I'm going to do my homework across all political party platforms, and I'm going to have my biblical values of what, so, so that's another thing, so the one thing is like, this isn't political um, it's spiritual, and the other thing that I get asked, well, well, pastor, what do you think about, and, you know, fill in the blank, right? What do you think about, and I'm just going to tell you, it doesn't matter. 
at all what I think. It matters everything what the Bible says. That's what matters. And so I'm going to do my very best today to hit on some hot button issues, but I'm going to do it from the perspective of not my background, not my opinion, but just teach you what the Bible says. Let me, let me frame this like this. Um, so this is, this is a coin. This is called cash. Those of you that are 30 and under, this is how we used to pay for things. This is uh, 1979, by the way, which was the last year the Pittsburgh Pirates won the World Series or just about anything for that matter. Pray for your pastor as I suffer through another embarrassing baseball season. We gave, the, the Reds have won four games this year and we've given some of those games. So, so it's just, anyway, anyway, this is a, this is a coin. There are two sides to this coin. There is a heads and a tails. If I take away one of the sides of the coin, I don't reduce it to half of its value. It's worth nothing. It ceases to be a coin and it loses all of its value and thus all of its power. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is a coin. <laughs> If I deface this coin and take away half the coin, it, you can't spend it, right? It loses all of its value. Does that make sense? Okay, so the gospel has two sides. There is truth and there is love. If I take away half of that, I am taking away all of the gospel. It ceases to be the gospel, Right? And so, and so we can't be, this, this can't be a time when the church is like, well, I just want to, I just want to love and I don't want to offend. Jesus said, I'm not trying to offend, but I'm going to tell you the truth. And if the truth offends, it offends. Right? And so we can't be like, oh, I just, I just love everybody and I'm just affirming everybody. Like if I affirm somebody in their heroin addiction, that does not help them. Does that make sense? On the other side, I can't be so truth, like that I'm just shouting truth from the church, that I'm not stepping in and loving people while I'm doing, these are not, hear, hear me, these are not just issues, they're people, and they're people that need Jesus, and so we step into this with truth and love, and I've just been praying, God, somehow, as I talk about some controversial stuff on Mother's Day, who does that? Pastor, don't do that. But as I talk about controversial stuff on Mother's Day, help me to frame this with truth and love. Let's go to the Word of God. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky, over the livestock, over all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his image, in the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them, and God blessed to them, and he said, Be fruitful, be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule or have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and over every living creature that moves along the ground and God saw all that he had made and it was very good God wants every one of his sons and daughters to live in fruitfulness to live in blessing and to live in dominion but in order to live in that blessing that God wants for us as individuals, as families, as a community, as Cabarrus County, as a nation, and in the world, we can't just do it any way we want to. We have to follow the blueprint that God outlined for us. And so here's three things just about this family gate right out of this passage of scripture. In order to build the family gate in our society the way that God intended. And the family gate is so important because it is a gate of which a lot of these other things come out of. So studies have shown, these are just, these are not religious studies, these are sociological studies, that when the family gate is attacked, when the nuclear family begins to break down, all of these other issues in society Society begin to rise. Cyclical generational poverty, um, uh, 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 crime, um, mental health issues. And so if even as an unbeliever, right, if you say we want to stop cyclical poverty, we want to we increase 
health in the area of mental health, we want to bring down crime, then you're going to say just by sociological standards that we need to do fam that we need to do family right. Obviously, then we're coming at this not just from a sociological perspective, but a biblical perspective as well, and say, but there's a there's a reason for that, and that's because God made us this way. So number one, we've got to build the family gate by affirming the beauty, dignity, and holiness of birth gender. Genesis 1.27 says, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. This image of God, this Imago Dei, this is one of the most incredible truths of Scripture. Think of one of the most beautiful landscapes or the most beautiful scenes that you've ever experienced. Maybe you're a mountain person. Maybe you're a beach person. Maybe you've, you've traveled to the, to the canyons of the Midwest. Maybe you've traveled internationally and seen some spectacular sights and, and waterfalls. But as spectacular as that site is, that mountain isn't created in the image of God. That waterfall isn't created in the image of God. Even beautiful horses and animals and, and all of the creatures, they're not created in the image of God. Humanity is. That's amazing. That's amazing. But, but watch this. I don't think it's by accident that God says you're made in my image, male and female. And so the distinct uh, differences of the genders are part of somebody being created in the image of God. And so if I want somebody to live in the fullness of the beauty of the image of God and realize that I'm a son of the king, I'm a daughter of the king, then I have to affirm their birth gender. That's not being mean. That is being extremely loving in truth. Loving in truth. So you say... Uh, uh, Man, where, like, how did we get here? Like, how, right? Like, how am I even having to preach this, right? Does that, uh, like, like, gender seems to be, I start talking about these things, and, it, and to me, that's like, it's almost like somebody telling me, hey, pastor, your shirt's blue. And, and I say, well, no, I, I would respectfully say that it's some sort of shade of pink, whatever this color is. No, pastor, your shirt's blue. No, it's pink. No, your shirt's blue. It's your shirt's blue. And by, and by week five, I'm starting to doubt myself. That's a, that's a psychological thing that, that psychologists call the illusion of truth. And basically, it's if you repeat a lie long enough, then people are going to believe it. And so you start to think, well, well maybe... I don't know. Maybe there's something wrong with my eyesight. Maybe the lighting's wrong. Maybe blue is the new pink in 2022. And you start to, right, you have all of these different, different thoughts. Do you know where that came from? That came from a Nazi propagandist named Joseph Goebel. Did you? So, so rewind years ago, decades ago. How did Hitler and how did the Nazi regime get millions of people to believe that killing an entire group of people was a good and right thing? It was simple. They repeated a lie long enough that it just sounded like truth. He said, he said this, repeat a lie often enough and it becomes the truth. It becomes the truth. The second thing that we have to understand is to call people back into this, to call people back into the way God designed the family. We need to affirm the beauty, dignity, and holiness of marriage between one man and one woman. Genesis 2, beginning at verse 18, says, The Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I'll make a helper suitable for him. And so the Lord formed out of the ground all of the wild animals and all the birds in the sky, and he brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So I want you to see that job, right? Job before curse. Your, jo your job is not a curse from the Lord. It's a blessing from the Lord. Verse 20, so the man gave, gave names to all the livestock, all the birds and all the wild animals. But for Adam, poor Adam, Adam left college without a wife. Adam, no suitable helper was found. 
So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. He said, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha, you, dude. While he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. And the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and he brought her to the man. And the man said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman for she was taken out of man. That is why man leaves his father and mother and he's united to his wife and they become one flesh. Again, you see the blessing of God, the blessing blessing of God is on this. The, the favor of God is, is upon this. And I, and, and I would say this too. Listen, as I'm speaking today, I realize that whether you're joining us online, whether you're in the house, I realize that I'm speaking to people who are struggling with some of these issues, right? Because this gate has been under attack. And so I realize I'm talking to people where maybe you have family members that are struggling with issues like same-sex attraction, who are strugg struggling with issues like divorce or pornography or the the list can go on and on, lust, any of these issues that would come against the family gate. And I want you to know if you or your family are struggling with these, you're in a church where you're in the right place. You're in the right place because this is a house and these are people, you are surrounded people that are going to tell you the truth, but it's only because we love you and we want what God has for you and he has the best for you. The third thing is to affirm the beauty, the dignity, and the holiness of the right to life. By affirming the beauty, dignity, and holiness of the right to life. Have you noticed that throughout scripture, every time there was a mighty move of God, every time there was about to be a mighty outpouring, a mighty deliverance, a mighty revival, what did the enemy do? He tried to take out an entire generation, right? Let's go all the way back to Pharaoh. So right before there was a mighty move of God of the deliverance of his people through, Pharaoh, through Moses, what did Pharaoh begin to do? He began to kill all the Hebrew boys. Before Jesus came on the scene, right before there was a mighty move of God in bringing deliverance, Herod began to murder all the boys to and under. Every time there was a mighty move of God, what if, what if over these past decades as we have seen the slaying of the unborn, what what if God's about to show up again? What about if there is about to be, what, what if there is about to be another move of God that Jeremiah 1, 5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Again, what's it pointing back to? That image of God, that image of God that doesn't start upon birth into the world according to the word of God. The Bible teaches that your very image doesn't even start at conception. It starts preconception. Like that's an amazing thought before you're even formed in the womb. And so the image of God was, was within you from the foundations of the earth. And so if we're talking about a society that is going to thrive, if we're going to talk about families that are going to thrive, we have to step into this space as believers with truth and love. I met a man this uh, past week by the name of Daniel. I want to shout out to Dave Calvert and FCA in our community. They put together some amazing uh, events centered around our, our National Week uh, of Prayer, National Day of Prayer. And he spoke at a, at a prayer luncheon on Thursday. And so Daniel was, he spoke in our youth ministry on Wednesday night in different schools around the area. It was absolutely amazing. But obviously Daniel was, uh, 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 has no arms and was born that way. And so Daniel began to tell his story, and he, he told how that when he was born, he was born. His parents didn't know this beforehand. The doctors did not know it beforehand. And so he was born not only without arms, but he was born without, and he wasn't breathing. And so the doctors stepped into the room, and they said, they asked his parents, do you even want us to try? Do you want us to try to resuscitate? And his parents didn't hesitate. And he said, yes, that's our, that's our boy. Do whatever you can. And so Daniel, they resuscitated him. He came back to life. And Daniel Daniel, over the past uh, decades of his life, now with his feet, can do over seven over seven thousand things with his feet. He can text, he can drive, he can shoot a gun. I don't know about the shooting a gun part. That seems a bit like, y'all. I don't even know if I can do seven thousand things with my hands. But he stood on that stage and said, "I'm so thankful that my parents chose life because you don't know." You don't know what God has planned for people that choose life. Gate Pregnancy Center. 
Y'all know about Gate Pregnancy? So Gate Pregnancy Center is a part of our Dream Center at Multiply Church right across the road. I got, I got this email from them this past week. I was going to try to tell the story, but it's more powerful. I hope you'll allow me just, just to read it. So Gate Pregnancy Center says this, due to targeted advertising, we've had an increase in the number of abortion-determined women we see at Gate. They call up asking for the abortion pill or to schedule an abortion. We never lie. We explain that we do not provide abortions, but we do offer medical-grade pregnancy tests and ultrasounds. By the way, the ultrasound that is over at Gate right now was just bought this past year, partially funded by your Kingdom Builders giving. Thank you for your generosity for that. And so I want you to listen now what happens because of that. They provide pregnancy tests and ultrasounds, both both of which are needed. We provide them with accurate information on all their options and answer any questions. We are clear, direct, and prepared. It was Monday morning and we had two back-to-back abortion-determined clients. The first client sat quietly with the advocate, never making eye contact and texting away on her phone. Not skipping a beat, the advocate shared the gospel message and stopped midway since there was no sign of engagement. A brisk, go on, I'm listening, sent the advocate back into motion with a simultaneous prayer for God to break the hold that Satan had on this young client. The advocate knew that it was a spiritual battle and carried on while the client remained seemingly disconnected. Next, the client went into the ultrasound room where she heard the baby and heard, where she saw her baby and heard the heartbeat. The once quiet and detached mother to be became a completely different person. She laughed, she asked questions, she mentioned that he was texting her sister, who was about as far along as she was, telling her, Come to gate, these people are amazing. The next client shows up with her two young, overly active boys. Breaking policy, we brought books and two chairs into the room for the boys while we performed the ultrasound. She had no intention of keeping the baby. Father was in jail and she wanted nothing to do with him. She was homeless and jobless. With two rambunctious boys challenging her all day long, she couldn't imagine adding another baby to this life. The ultrasound began with two nurses. One observed her while the other performed the ultrasound. Neither nurse could find a heartbeat. They tried and tried, but to no avail. The nurse manager mentioned that they were struggling to find the baby's heartbeat as only God can do. The client, being told the baby may not have a heartbeat, began to worry. Remember, this is somebody that came in not wanting to keep the baby to begin with. She began to worry. But now the baby had importance. Her mothering instinct to protect kicked in. One nurse stepped out and went to the staff area. She said, pray. Pray that we're able to find this baby's heartbeat. Prayer began immediately. When she returned to the patient, they tried one more time, and there it was. There was the precious pounding heartbeat of the baby's strong heart. Mom was relieved and instantly felt a bond, and she's keeping the baby. She's keeping the baby. She chose life. Multiply Church, these are not some faraway stories. These are two babies in this county that are going to be born this year because of ministry that is taking place through the King and your generosity. Maybe you would want to be a a coach or a volunteer at at Gate. We'll throw that information up on the screen. But this is is the power. This is the power of not keeping Jesus to ourselves, but saying that we are going to step into these areas with both sides of the coin, both sides of the coin, that now is not the time to shrink back. Now is not the time to worry about losing friends and followers. Now is the time to stand up for righteousness and stand up for truth because it's not your truth it's God's truth now is the time to stand but now is the time to love like we've never loved before now is the time to say if you're struggling I'm here for you if you're hurting I'm here for you Jesus is here for you truth and love truth and love because the words of Jesus are that the the truth will do what set you free he says the truth will set you free 
do you know, do you remember what the context was that Jesus said that statement? Powerful statement. What was the context? It was John chapter 9, and it was the woman who was caught in the very act of sexual immorality, the very act of adultery. For our context this morning, could we say that she was struggling with gender identity issues? Could we, could we extend that to she was struggling with, with LGBTQ issues? Could we say that, that she may have had an abortion and they, they caught her and they bring her, and they throw her at the feet of Jesus and they all had their stones in their hand? What does Jesus do? He stoops down and just starts to write in the dirt. He says, he who is without sin cast the first stone. So I should probably, I'm not going to do it. I should probably have all the perfect people in the house. Go ahead and stand up. Right? There's a lot of hurting people who are struggling with their identity. Somehow the enemy's trying to confuse them with gender stuff. There's a lot of hurting, hurting moms and moms-to-be that are thinking about an abortion. We step in, not with stones in our hand, but we kneel down and say these words, the same words of Jesus. Has anyone else condemned you? Then neither do I condemn you. But then what else does Jesus say? Go and sin no more. Do you see the coin? Do you see truth and love? How many of you would say today, Pastor, Pastor, as I posture my heart to step into these gates, help me to have courage to speak truth and the heart of Jesus to speak love. If that's you, would you just close your eyes and slip a hand to heaven and say, God, help, help me. Help me today, empower me with the Holy Spirit to stand for righteousness, to stand for biblical values, to stand for the gate of the family. But Father, may I take the posture of Jesus and kneel down and say, we love you, we care about you. This is a place for you. You you belong here. I pray that you would empower us to do that. Maybe you're here today and you're struggling with one of those issues. Maybe the enemy is trying to put guilt upon you. Know that you have come to the right place and the grace of Jesus is here for you today. Maybe there's somebody within the sound of my voice that would say, Pastor, I don't know that I've ever said yes to Jesus. I've done some religious stuff. I've been to church, but I don't know that I have a personal relationship with this Jesus. In this moment, with heads bowed and eyes closed, I'm going to pray a prayer. And if that's you, if you just want to say yes to Jesus, if you you want to say, I've tried to run my life and I've made a mess of it, and I just want to surrender my life to Jesus and ask his forgiveness, I'm going to count to three. And I'm just going to ask that you lift up your hand and you can put it right back down, just, just as a sign to Jesus of saying, I'm saying yes to life. And after that, we're going to all pray together. I'm not going to call you forward. We're just going to all pray together but that's you today you want to say yes to Jesus one two three hands up you can put it down let's all pray could you repeat this prayer everybody in the house repeat this prayer after me say Jesus I know that I'm a sinner how many of you know that's true everybody I know that I'm a sinner and I ask forgiveness I come to the cross and ask you to come into my heart and come into my life so that I can live wide awake with the love of God and fully alive to my purpose. And it's in Jesus' name. It's in Jesus' name. It's in Jesus' name. Come on, let's take back the gates, church. Let's step in with truth and love and win our world to Jesus. I hope you enjoyed the service today. And if you decided to follow Jesus, we would love to know. All you have to do is text ALIVE to 94000. We have resources we would love to give you as you begin your journey of following Jesus. Well, today is... It's Mother's Day!
Today is a Mother's special. Day. So today it's is Mother's a, Day. <laughs> it's a special day, Mother's, it's Mother's day. day. Happy Mother's Day. Thanks. Yeah. Uh -huh. What are your big plans for Mother's Day? Nothing. To do nothing. Do nothing. Yes, it's Mother's Day, so, so I'm not gonna clean the dishes because it's Mother's Day. What special thing are you expecting for Mother's Day? To do nothing. To do nothing. Yes. So that means everybody just leave your mother alone. She's gonna eat lunch with you. Go ahead and take care of that next. And then after that, she better not pick up her plate. You better pick up her plate for her. You better wash it off. You better wash your own dishes. Are you she, telling this to yourself? You're reminding yourself? No, I'm telling everybody else out oh, okay. there in, in, in uh, online land yes. that they need to figure out, listen, it is not okay for you to make your mother do mother's work on Mother's Day. Now, basically, just don't forget that it's Mother's Day. Don't forget? No. What do we give? Whatever they want, because it's Mother's Day. I think we take from mothers more than we give from uh, two mothers. Not on Mother's Day. You better not take. Don't take your stuff from your mom. No, I'm not cleaning. I'm not washing. I'm not... Is that, you know what's kind of bad about that is that I feel like it's like a holiday from being a mom. That's bad. I, don't, I still want to be a mom. Is that what it is? That no, it's not. It's You're supposed to honor the mother. You're supposed to recognize That mothers. she's awesome. Yeah. Every day of your life. Yeah. That she's awesome. Do you have a mother? You love your mother? Do don't you forget have a mother? Mother's Day. I think everybody has a mother. Everybody had a mother. <laughs> <laughs> or you have somebody you can think of like a mother. If you don't like your old mother. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't say that. Hi, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. And Happy Mother's Day to all the other mothers in my family and all the mothers out there. And all of you other mothers. Yes. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs>